Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Board of NHS England. We're delighted this morning to welcome members of the public who have joined us here in the meeting room in London, and also those who may be watching this session uh, on the live web stream. That's part of our commitment to openness and transparency in all that we do. We are here uh, for NHS England uh, as an organisation that belongs to the people. And it's right that there should be a spotlight cast on the way in which decisions are taken by this organisation. We meet in public. That means that uh, our meetings are observed by members of the public. It's not an interactive meeting, I'm afraid, but um, uh, we uh, will be taking some very significant items of business this morning, and it's right uh, that they should be uh, publicly observed. We don't do all of our business in public. There are times when we work together as a team of executive directors and non-executive directors uh, on what we call development sessions, as, as we're bringing new policies and new strategies through to the point where we can bring them to the public session. But um, inevitably, in some of the complex areas that we're working in, we need a great deal of build-up time and uh, development of a mutual understanding around the table before we can bring it uh, to public session. Secondly, and immediately after this meeting, we'll go into private session because there are one or two items of business which are not yet ready for public discussion and which relate, uh, on some occasions, it's the sort of business that relates to you know, particular HR issues affecting individuals uh, or to uh, serious financial decisions that we need to work our way through before we publish uh, the outcomes. Before I kick off this morning, I'd like to say a few words about what we did last night. Uh, we hosted our first ever annual general meeting. This is the first time I'm advised that uh, the NHS nationally has ever done something like this. It's not been uncommon for uh, trusts and hospital trusts, etc., to, to have meetings such as this. But for us, it was, I think, an exceptionally interesting experience, not just because of the formal material at the meeting, which was our reports on uh, our first year in operation uh, prior to our actually becoming NHS England, but because it was preceded by a series of workshops, five <laughs> workshops, uh, very valuably facilitated by Olivia Butterworth and her team, which examined various themes such as end of life, care, call to action, uh, and, uh, and other themes that are vital to our future were explored through the eyes of patients and members of the public and interest groups and other stakeholders, resulting in a series of presentations to us which gave us, I think, quite new and valuable insights. And actually, I have to say, for me, persuaded me of the extraordinary value of ensuring that everything that we do is, is a matter of co-production uh, with patients and public uh, who we're here to serve. So um, I would just like publicly to express my thanks to all those who participated in yesterday's session and um, for making this AGM a pioneering exercise in openness, uh, but also a learning exercise for us as much as a reporting and accountability exercise for us. There are no apologies uh, for absence from this morning's board meeting, and um, I propose now to move into the substantive business of the board. I want to take, first of all, uh, any declarations of interest. Um, I, I haven't received any in advance, so I'll assume that there are none to declare other than those that are on our register. Secondly, as one pre preliminary item of business, I should like to report uh, I know with the full support of the board, uh, my proposal for the appointment of Ed Smith, uh, one of our non-executive directors, to be deputy chair and senior independent director of the board of NHS England. I'm immensely grateful to Ed for agreeing to take this on, and indeed it's no more than a, a formalisation of a role that he's already been uh, fulfilling, and I'm, I'm deeply uh, conscious of my debt to him for the support uh, and, and assurance that he gives me. Uh, so, um, I, may I assume that that has um, unanimous consent around the, around the table. Thank you very much. There's no fire alarm test due during this meeting, and if the alarm does sound, then uh, our staff will escort people from the building. 
Let me then go straight into the substantive business of the day. Uh, the first item uh, is the minutes of the previous meeting of 18th of July. I've not had any comments from members of the board, so may I take them as an accurate record of those proceedings? Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, we have noted an action list um, uh, regarding the status of each of the actions from the previous meetings of the board, uh, but I don't think we need to uh, dwell on that. Uh, it's a matter for us to continue to, uh, to chase progress. I might just invite, however, Tim Kelsey to say something briefly on the Integrated Performance Report, uh, and there's a couple of items there, Tim. Is there anything you'd like to say to us on that? Um, the, we'll be talking about the report, the report later on in, yes. in relation to specifically... Maybe you could wrap it up in the, when we turn yeah, to the performance so. report. Yeah. Um, yeah. There were just a couple of items and issues that we wanted to take on there. Um, Paul, there was one item. Where's Paul? Is there? Hiding well, in the corner. Yes, right. Okay. Is there anything you wanted to say um, on the item regarding the transparency and DH? Um, yeah, that's... Um, the letter has been drafted. It's on its way. We will expect a response shortly. So that's all in hand. Good. Okay. And um, Bruce, there was something on academic health science networks. All in hand. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll we'll come back to those issues um, um, in part, at least, during the rest of the meeting this morning. Uh, so let me then move on, if I may, to item three, which is the chief executive report. We have a written paper, but I'm going to invite David Nicholson to talk to it. David. Thank you, Chairman. I, I assume people have read the, 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 the report. There are two or three things that I want to highlight on it. The first one is the work that we're doing on strategy. And just to kind of reinforce the importance of this, this when you think about the nature and scale of the challenge of the NHS going forward, um, we really do need a strategic response, and I guess a response that will go beyond the electoral cycle. It seems to me that was one of the reasons why NHS England was set up in the first place, to be able to give us a medium to longer term view about how we develop the NHS and in particular how we respond to the, um, the challenges uh, that we are set out in the publication Call to Action, which we've discussed at the board on a number of, a number of times before. It sets out the nature and scale of the challenge, it sets out the kind of direction that the NHS might want to go in. but in a sense, heralds a more broader discussion about what's required um, uh, for, the, for the NHS going forward. Um, there are a series of products that will come out of that process um, that, we've, that, we've, uh, that we've discussed. There's a, a, a couple of things that have happened in relation to that. The, uh, one of the products is the uh, uh, accident emergency, emergency, sorry, the urgent and emergency care review, which is coming to fruition and will be coming to the board shortly, which will set out a vision and a direction for urgent care and emergency care service across the country, um, uh, which I think will significantly impact on the way in which we think and deliver emergency services. Um, and also in August we published the report on the first uh, uh, attempt to think about what the primary care strategy might, might look like. Two, I think, important interventions in what is developing a, as a significant set of uh, uh, discussions. Um, we have a communications plan in place. The, the annual general meeting was part of the discussion that we're having with patients and the public about um, uh, the future of the NHS. Um, there are a whole series of events, both locally run by CCGs and nationally run by the um, by NHS England, which will engage people in discussions about how we can take the NHS forward. And underpinning all of that is the, the planning uh, uh, approach, um, which again we'll be bringing to the, the board, which will, uh, which, which will require all clinical commissioning groups, indeed all, all commissioners, whether they're clinical commissioning groups or ourselves, so to deliver five-year forward looks and a two-year financial operational plan to underpin it. So really important, crunchy work going on at the moment, which I think will make a big difference to the NHS going forward. Um, on the, uh, the mandate, a critical part of the way in which uh, this organisation uh, relates to the government, how uh, uh, the consultation on that continues. Uh, it ends at the end of September. We're thinking very carefully about um, our response and how we're working uh, 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 around all that. But two or three things I would say uh, about it. 
First of all, it's really important that the relationship between ourselves and government is determined by improving outcomes. That seems to me critically important for our patients and our public and really significant for us. We've got to make sure that um, uh, for a for an NHS which increasingly needs to be locally driven, that people have the space um, locally to innovate and to take services forward so we don't need a, a environment which is cluttered for them with things. Um, and we need to make sure that our relationship uh, with government and the department continues to develop and improve. Um, we've got more work to do. Uh, to get uh, everything in, into place, but I'm confident we'll come up with a good conclusion with the department at the end of this of this month. We'll set out, I think, clearly what's required uh, through the through the mandate. Um, the third thing I just uh, want to mention is the um, the friends and family test. I know that Tim is going to be talking about it this in in, in, in detail. Um, I do think this is a very very significant thing for the NHS. Um, uh, and I think when people look back in the future uh, to this, this will be seen as a significant uh, uh, point when the NHS started to not only uh, demonstrate that it was listening directly to patients, but also a really important mechanism by which people can measure whether they really are living up to the idea that um, patients should be treated like customers um, and the public should be treated like customers and all of that. And I think. Um, there are indications already that many organisations of the NHS are absorbing this information and are making real changes to improve things for, for patients. And then finally, just to mention the uh, Berwick report that came out, we will be bringing a more formal report to, um, to, to the board about what our actions are in relation to patient safety, a critical part of the response to the Francis Inquiry. David, thank you yeah. very much for that. Let yeah. me invite um, questions and comments from members of the board. Kieran. Yeah. Can I pick up on the John Barrett report? Yeah. How, how did it land? Are we taking it seriously enough? Are, in my view at least, it, there, there are a lot of other organisations, not least trusts, who need to maybe take it very seriously as well. So are we confident that you know, the link between a good report and action on the ground is there? Yeah, I mean, I think I, 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 it's very interesting the the, the, Bur, Bur, the Bur report because it, what it, di it didn't have hundreds and hundreds of recommendations in it, and um, uh, but it did talk about a culture and approach and a direction, which I think in lots of ways will be more a significant and more long term, and it's an impact on the NHS than perhaps some other things that have been. That have, that, have, that have been done. Um, we're working really quite hard, and we've got a one of our domains, of course, is patient safety. We have responsibilities um, that were given to us around the old national patient safety uh, uh, or, or, or organisation. We have a director of patient safety uh, 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 as well. So all, we're working very hard on to see how we can do that. And part of that, I think, is how do we get. Um, it embedded in organisations across the system as a whole. And to be fair, there's a lot of enthusiasm for this, um, for the, making this happen. And I think some of the things that we've done around academic health science centres, the way we're bringing organisations together to think about how they are, uh, are taking work forward will enable us to build the kind of um, uh, collective response to patient safety because one of the things Don Berwick says is you need to, uh, uh, people to work together across organisations and systems to enable it to happen and I think we've got an infrastructure there that could really help us help help us do that. I think the um, uh, we had a, a programme board for uh, NHS IQ last week where we talked about um, how we could shift their work and priorities to support uh, patient safety activities, particularly in terms of the improvement science that you need to make things things, things happen. Um, and I know that we're talking about how we can build a coalition of leadership across the NHS, not just us, but other organisations, to enable it to happen. So I think, although um, it didn't get as many headlines as some of the other uh, 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 documents that come out, I think it'll have a much more long-lasting report. But uh, in a sense, the board will make our own judgments about that when we bring a, a, a firm set of... Uh, um, uh, proposals to the board about how we take it forward. And that will build, won't it, on the paper that we're seeing today on the response to the Francis report? And, and yeah. Okay. 
Right, thank you very much. Anything else for Chief Executive? Mark. Mm. That um, low responses can have a dramatically disproportionate impact on scores, which is obviously a very sound point. Um, do you have um, plans for sort of refreshing interest periodically to ensure an, you know, an upward trajectory? Yeah. yeah, I don't know whether Tim wants to respond because he's. I was going to cover that in the next item, but happy yeah. to do with it now, or shall I? I think bring it into the next okay. item as, yeah. part of okay. the, as part of the <coughs> narrative. 